Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome back to the Eternal Set Review for Defiance. Today we're going to talk about the rest of the Shadow Cards before we move on to the Multi-Faction Cards tomorrow and wrap the whole review in the next few days. Um, but before we move on to the Shadow Cards, you know the drill. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification icon to not miss out on future content. And please, if you want to uh, help support the free content, please consider whitelisting uh, eternaltitans.com and YouTube, that would really help a lot. And now on to the Shadow Cards. Okay. We are here on page three. First we have Umbral Edge. Um, it's a relic weapon, pretty small one, 2-2, two, two, four, 4 power, but on Empower it grows. Um, problem is this makes this effectively a, five, a turn five play, and then it's a 3-3 three, three weapon, which is pretty underwhelming. It can grow, but relic weapons aren't that easy um, to protect long term. And playing a relic weapon that most likely can't even attack anything the time you play it, especially without dying, um, is not a great deal. Relic weapons are measured by how well they do the turn you drop them. And this does pretty poorly. In limited, it might be fine. Like in limited, it's probably playable, but... I don't think it's going to be great and limited, but at least solid in constructed. This is terrible. Next we have Breast Dealer, just another limited common. It's a five cost five three. Nothing to write home about, but it has pledge, making it a bit better. But all in all, I think I would be fairly unhappy to have this in my deck usually. Also, not a relevant unit type either. Then we have Consuming Greed. That's a, another five drop. A double shadow 3-1 with flying. That's a lot better. It's very fragile. But on summon you may sacrifice a relic to play a 6-4 Rust Fiend. So it also turns one of your relics into a 2 cost 6-4. So if the opponent somehow returns it to your hand, you can replay it very cheaply. Um, so basically this is aimed at the Relics Matters type strategies. And I think it's actually a pretty strong common for uh, that kind of strategy. 6-4 is nothing to sneeze at, effectively getting like 9-5 in stats over two bodies from a 5-drop. Even if you have to throw away a relic, seems like a pretty good deal, especially if parts of it even have flying. Uh, all in all, this card looks pretty strong. It's situational, but if your deck can support it, it seems like a great card. Next we have Elder Astrologer, a weird floating elf mage. It's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four, with flying, and on summon you give one of your units uh, plus one attack and lifesteal this turn for each of your units. So, yeah, in Constructed, this seems a bit underpowered for a 5-drop. And, yeah, elves are not quite a tribe yet, and even if they are, they are better 5-drops like Champion of Cunning, so I don't see this uh, making it into any elf decks, let alone anything else. But in limited, this is kind of a bomb, or like at least a premium card, rather, not necessarily a bomb. Um, it's not going to necessarily win the game on its own, but it is pretty strong. A 5 cost 4-4 four, four flyer alone is already pretty good, and then the effect, just getting like a huge um, life swing in with the summon ability, uh, is pretty good. So this is a great pickup for any Shadow Draft deck. Next we have Eye for an Eye. You kill an exhausted enemy unit and then draw a unit from your void with a higher cost. So um, basically either you kill the biggest guy and might not get something back, but then at least got an okay removal, like a slightly cheaper non-fast cut ties, or you kill something medium-sized that you probably have, just barely have a bigger unit in your void, and then this can completely turn around the game and be super devastating two for one. Um, either way, you're getting a decent to great deal out of this. Seems like a very good card in limited, um, especially for a bit grindier or slower decks. Uh, in constructed, obviously not a consideration. Next we have Pillar of Dreams. When a unit goes to your void, your other units get plus one attack. So this is kind of a weird obelisk type card first off costs one more that's already kind of bad then it costs double shadow that's a minor additional downside potentially makes it less splashable and then 
it is pretty conditional. The unit has to go to your void, and then your units all only get attack, not health. So all in all, this seems highly situational and too slow and underpowered and constructed. But in limited, I can see this being decent at least. It's still pretty conditional. So I would have to play with it to know how well it plays out in limited, but it should at least be fine uh, to have in your deck, but not 100% sure. Next we have Auric Captain, the 6-drop uh, Color Lord of Shadow. Um, this is probably the... Yeah, this is like only the force best, I think, since Charge, Aegis, and Flying are all better than the Lifesteal, but this is at least better than the Time, but that's not hard. Overwhelm is like a non-keyword, basically. Um, so yeah, we get a 6-cost, 5-5 five, five Lifesteal that gives all other Shadow units plus 1, plus 1. In uh, Constructed, this is not good enough. In Limited, this is great, and I could see this in Limited even being better than one of the other three um, of these captains or lords that I um, mentioned before, like this can turn out better than the Aegis one, for example, or the Charge one in Limited. Because in Limited, the flying one is probably going to be the best one. Um, next we have Bloodlust, 6 cost spell. You steal and ready an enemy unit this turn, it goes berserk. So it's basically madness that for twice the cost also gets you two attacks with their unit and then leaves their unit back with Reckless. Um, but yeah, this is way too expensive for this type of effect because this is an effect that aggressive decks want and aggressive decks don't want that effect uh, for six, even if it gives them Berserk. So yeah, unfortunately, pretty bad card. What can I say? in both formats, I think. Next we have Sadistic Lee. It's a 6 cost 5-5. Five, five. The enemy player discards the top two cards from their deck for each of your units. So, and another mill card. Mill seems to be kind of built around units in uh, this game for now. Like, most of the mill cards are units or encourage you to have more units, like this one. Um, yeah, I mean, so this is a fairly strong mill effect, but yeah, I already said what I think of mill when we talked about the little two drop shroom in an earlier part. But yeah, maybe there is like an okay fun deck, fun mill deck out there now. But I'm probably not the one to mess around with it because it's usually not the kind of thing that I'm interested in. But for people that enjoy this kind of stuff, brew away. In uh, limited, by the way. Um, this seems pretty good on its own, actually, like a 6 cost 5-5 five, five is fine, it's not great, but fine, and the effect can maybe randomly win a uh, stalled out game, but um, yeah, nothing to write home about, but seems like an okay filler in limited. Next we have Dizzo's Office, one of the better sites, I think. It's also pretty expensive, but it survives... Um, out of the vault and Rizan, which is pretty important, especially for an expensive side. Plus double shadow. Your units have lifesteal, which is potentially a nice ongoing effect. And yeah, his agenda is pretty strong. Sorry. We get scheme, which is a lot better if you don't have, like, which is actually quite good if you don't have to pay the three mana for it, like the three power. The only problem with the card basically is how much it costs for what it does. If it costs nothing, the card's actually really good. Threaten, not very good. It's kind of like the, the bad one. There's usually one that's pretty bad and kind of just a freebie um, with little value. Here it is Threaten, but thanks to the lifesteal from the office, even plus two attack uh, equals a four point life swing potentially, making it fine. And it's permanent, so it's not that terrible. It's kind of like. Um, a worse version of the Caleb's favor on peak. And then last but not least, we have cut ties. The fact that it's fast obviously is irrelevant here, but so is the fact that it costs six and a zero cost slay. Happens to be a pretty good card. So um, usually when this comes down, you will just kill something 
making this a seven cost slay that then also generates a lot of value and Dizzo, while not being the, a great card to put in your deck, is a pretty good card to get from an from a side for free. First of all, it blocks pretty well. The turn it comes down, it has life steal. It is unblockable. The unblockable and the life steal from the office um, work pretty well together. Um, letting it kind of play defense while it's pressuring the opponent, and then the summon effect can also come in uh, quite handy, but you don't have to use it. So even without the summon effect, it's a fine card to get. So yeah, all in all, pretty good site. Uh, one of the least figured out sites currently, I think. I personally also don't quite know um, where I would want this, what I want to do with this. But uh, yeah, it uh, is definitely a strong card and a limited is the bomb. Next we have Fear Made Flesh, a 7 cost 5-7 flyer with pledge. Pledge on expensive cards is always the most valuable. And when Fear Made Flesh hits the enemy player, each unit in their deck gets minus one, minus one. So kind of an odd card, not much of a constructed card. Interesting effect, kind of like reverse uh, Nirvaniing your opponent's deck, so to speak, but only on the units, not on their weapons. And yeah, but in limited, a 7 cost 5 7 flyer alone is already pretty good, and then the effect is also much more relevant there. All in all, a pretty strong limited card. Then we have an improvised club, and a pretty big one at that. Would not expect an improvised club to be this big, but yeah, 8 cost relic weapon 6 6. Um, clearly not a constructed card. In limited, this seems like a decent curve topper if your deck. Is going late enough to want to curve up to eight. You probably at most want like one eight drop in your limited decks, if any, depends on the deck. But yeah, it seems like a solid curve topper for limited decks. And last but not least, we have a Kanta the Huntress, um, a nine cost seven seven flyer, also pledge. So pledge on a nine drop like this is very, very valuable, I think, because. This is miserable in your opening hand, and if you get it in your opening hand, you just play it as power and don't look back. Um, on summon, you kill an enemy unit, and yeah, you get a pretty good body. Nine power is a lot, but I don't think this is meant to be uh, played fair and square. But what you can do with this very well is cheat it into play by reanimating it. This is one of the best reanimation targets we have at the moment, I think, together with uh, Kenna. Um, a lot better than the. Um, the 4-5, the Snow Crust, uh, Snow Crush Animist, I think, because this is bigger, much nicer threat, is much better in your opening hand thanks to the pledge, and also kills their best unit rather than stunning their good units and kind of killing their chaff most of the time. But yeah, uh, pretty nice card all in all for a top end card, but yeah, 9 cost cards are tricky to make work and construct it in any way. In limited 9 is a lot, and I think it is not very playable because if you draw it um, from turn 2 onwards, you can't pledge it, so it will just sit in your hand for a long time. And yeah, while it is super powerful when you get to play it, 9 is also usually too much in limited, so I don't think it's very playable, unfortunately, even though it's very powerful. Okay, that's all the shadow cards. Time to look at the top 5. Okay, as usual, in no particular order, we have Rista, a Cantor's Herald. Oops, I misspelled this. Let me fix this. Hair lad. That uh, sounds like kind of a funny Irish word. Anyway, Rista, a Cantor's Herald. She's pretty amazing, actually. Just have to figure out where she fits best. But all in all, a pretty strong card, as I already mentioned. Dizzle's Off is one of the technically top sites, I think, in the set. Seven is a bit expensive. The fact that you want units to benefit from the ongoing effect in conjunction with how expensive it is, making it more of a controlling card, is a bit of a tension. But I think uh, there should be some kind of late game unit heavy enough deck that um, yeah makes good use of 
Dizzle's office, it's definitely a strong card. And then we just have some uh, decent proactive early drops, Direwood Slasher as a nice early uh, Berserk and Power Drop, and Karen Stewart as a solid uh, two drop alternative for aggressive decks that uh, can empower enough. Both of these pair pretty well with Rista, but are nothing uh, particularly exciting uh, to write home about, but they are, um, yeah, constructed considerations in my opinion at least. And then Red Cage, because it's kind of interesting and unique, and also enables my honorable mention, Les Rylobotomy, probably the best, and maybe going forward there's some kind of interesting deck that can use both cards uh, to good effect, because if Lobotomy is supported, it's a pretty good card, and uh, Red Cage has some interesting things going for it as well and seems like one of the better uh, relics matter payoff effects, I think, since it's cheap and, yeah, generates uh, some form of value uh, right away. Okay, this concludes <coughs> the review of Shadow. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, also, if you still haven't and are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button turn on the notifications to not miss out on future content and also follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Twitch for all the latest updates and news and live streaming of the various games that I cover. Um, you can find all the info in the description below as well, as well as playlist link and so on. I always put a lot of information in the description so you can have everything at your fingertips that you need without having to type up stuff from on screen and so on. Um, okay, one last thing. Please help keep the free content going by um, turning off your ad blog or whitelisting eternaltitans.com and YouTube when watching the content and visiting our team website. And you can also further support me by using your uh, Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime on uh, Twitch to subscribe to my channel or just check out the donation link in the subscription below. There's plenty of ways to support the content or just share the content and tell your friends. That also helps a lot. Uh, thanks everyone. This was the Eternal Set review for Defiance Shadow Cards Part 3. I'm your host Manu S. And thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.